Society Education In 1933, the enactment of anti-Semitic legislation led to the expulsion of Jewish educators, teachers, professors, and officials from Germany's education system. A prerequisite for educators was membership in the National Socialistische Lehrerbund NSLB. National Socialist Teachers League and university professors were mandated to join the National Socialist German lecturers. Pledging loyalty and obedience to Hitler was compulsory for teachers, and deviations from party ideals often resulted in reports by students or colleagues, leading to dismissals. Inadequate funding for salaries prompted numerous educators to exit the profession, causing a rise in average class sizes from 37 in 1927 to 43 in 1938, due to the ensuing shortage of teachers. Interior Minister Wilhelm Frick, Bernard Rust of the Reich Ministry of Science, Education and Culture, and other authorities issued frequent and occasionally conflicting directives on lesson content, and approved textbooks for primary and secondary schools. Books deemed unacceptable to the regime were purged from school libraries. Mandatory indoctrination in Nazi ideology commenced in January 1934. Students identified as future party elite members underwent indoctrination from the age of 12 at Adolf Hitler schools for primary education and National Political Institutes of Education for secondary education. Intensive indoctrination of future elite military personnel took place at Order Castles. The Nazi salute became a routine practice in schools in 1934, as children were indoctrinated from an early age. Primary and secondary education accentuated racial biology, population policy, culture, geography, and physical fitness. The curriculum in various subjects, such as biology, geography, and arithmetic, was reshaped to emphasize race. Military education became the focal point of physical education, with an emphasis on subjects like ballistics and aerodynamics. Students were obliged to watch films prepared by the school division of the Reich Ministry of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda. At universities, appointments to top positions witnessed power struggles involving the education ministry, university boards, and the National Socialist German Students League. Despite pressure from the League and government ministries, most university professors did not alter their lectures or syllabi during the Nazi era, particularly in predominantly Catholic regions. University enrollment dwindled from 104,000 students in 1931 to 41,000 in 1939. Nevertheless, medical school enrollment surged as Jewish doctors were compelled to exit the profession, creating favorable job prospects for medical graduates. Commencing in 1934, university students were obligated to attend regular and time-consuming military training sessions conducted by the SA. First-year students were also mandated to serve six months in a labor camp for the Reich Labor Service, with an additional 10 weeks required for second-year students. Role of Women and Family Women played a significant role in the social policies of the Nazi regime, which staunchly opposed the feminist movement, attributing it to Jewish intellectuals. Instead, they advocated for a patriarchal societal structure, envisioning German women to center their lives around their husbands, families, children, and homes. Feminist groups faced either dissolution or integration into the National Socialist Women's League, an organization orchestrating nationwide activities to champion motherhood and domestic responsibilities. Educational courses covered topics such as child rearing, sewing, and cooking. Renowned feminists like Anita Augsburg, leader Gustava Heyman, and Helen Stocker were compelled into exile. The League published NS Frauenwort, the singular Nazi-approved women's magazine, functioning primarily as a conventional women's magazine despite its propaganda elements. Women were actively encouraged to exit the workforce, with propaganda campaigns endorsing the creation of larger families by racially suitable women. The Ehrenkreuz der Deutschen Mutter, cross of honor of the German mother, was conferred upon women for giving birth to four, six, or eight or more children. Despite these measures contributing to a rise in the birth rate, the number of families with four or more children dwindled between 1935 and 1940. The removal of women from the workforce did not lead to job openings for men, as women predominantly occupied roles not appealing to men, such as domestic servants, weavers, or positions in the food and beverage industries. 
Nazi ideology also impeded the extensive employment of women in munitions factories, resulting in the utilization of foreign and slave labor. Nazi leaders propagated the notion that rational and theoretical work ran contrary to a woman's nature, discouraging their pursuit of higher education. A law in April 1933 restricted female university admissions to 10% of the number of men, precipitating a decline in female enrollment in secondary and post-secondary schools. However, with men enlisting in the armed forces during the war, women constitute half of the post-secondary enrollment by 1944. The ideal Nazi woman was anticipated to be robust, healthy, and vital, embodying the image of a resilient peasant woman toiling the land and birthing sturdy children. Organizations like the Hitler Youth, Jung Madelbund, and Bund Deutsche Madel were established for the indoctrination of Nazi values, emphasizing physical education. The Nazi regime adopted a lenient stance on sexual matters and demonstrated sympathy towards women with illegitimate children. The Lebensborn Association, founded by Himmler in 1935, aimed to destigmatize illegitimate births, particularly within SS families. Existing laws against abortion were rigorously enforced, leading to a decrease in the number of abortions, although exceptions were made for eugenic reasons in 1935. Health Nazi Germany initiated a formidable anti-tobacco movement grounded in groundbreaking research by Franz H. Müller in 1939, which unveiled a causal connection between smoking and lung cancer. The Rye Health Office implemented diverse measures to curb smoking, including the creation of lectures and pamphlets. Smoking was prescribed in numerous workplaces, on trains, and for on-duty members of the military. The government also addressed other carcinogenic substances like asbestos and pesticides. As part of a comprehensive public health initiative, endeavors were made to enhance water supplies, eliminate lead and mercury from consumer products, and encourage women to undergo regular screenings for breast cancer. Government-operated health care insurance plans were accessible, but starting in 1933, Jews were denied coverage. In the same year, Jewish doctors were barred from treating government-insured patients. Subsequently, in 1937, Jewish doctors were prohibited from treating non-Jewish patients, and by 1938, they were stripped of their right to practice medicine entirely. Commencing in 1941, medical experiments, many of them pseudoscientific, were conducted on inmates in concentration camps. SS Hauptsturmführer Josef Mengel, the camp doctor at Auschwitz, gained notoriety for his involvement in such experiments resulting in the deaths of numerous victims. Concentration camp inmates were made available for purchase by pharmaceutical companies for drug testing and other experiments, contributing to the heinous acts committed during this dark period. Environmentalism Nazi society displayed elements supportive of animal rights, with a significant number of individuals expressing affection for zoos and wildlife. The government instituted various measures aimed at ensuring the protection of animals and the environment. In 1933, the Nazis introduced a stringent animal protection law that influenced the parameters for medical research. Despite the prohibition on vivisection, the law faced lax enforcement, and the Ministry of the Interior readily issued permits for experiments on animals. Guided by Hermann Göring, the Rye Forestry Office enforced regulations mandating foresters to plant diverse trees, fostering the creation of suitable habitats for wildlife. In 1933, a new Rye Animal Protection Act was enacted to further address these concerns. Additionally, in 1935, the regime introduced the Rye Nature Protection Act, aiming to shield the natural landscape from excessive economic development. This legislation permitted the expropriation of privately owned land to establish nature preserves and supported long-range planning endeavors. Although some superficial measures were taken to control air pollution, enforcement dwindled once the war commenced. Religion In 1933, when the Nazis ascended to power, Germany's religious landscape was predominantly Protestant, with around 67% of the population identifying as such. Roman Catholics constituted 33% and Jews made up less than 1%. By the 1939 census, the religious distribution had shifted, with 54% considering themselves Protestant, 40% Roman Catholic, 
3.5% aligning with the Nazi religious movement known as Gottglaubig, God-believing, and 1.5% identifying as non-religious. Nazi Germany extensively incorporated Christian imagery and introduced new Christian celebrations, including a significant event commemorating the 1200th anniversary of the birth of Charlemagne, the Frankish emperor credited with forcibly Christianizing neighboring continental Germanic peoples. Nazi propaganda depicted Adolf Hitler as a Christ-like figure, a redeemer according to the Christian model, destined to liberate the world from what they considered the Antichrist. Through the Gleitsch school tolting process, Hitler aimed to establish a unified Protestant Reich Church by merging Germany's 28 existing Protestant state churches. Ludwig Müller, a pro-Nazi figure, was appointed Reich Bishop, and the German Christians, a pro-Nazi pressure group, gained control of the new church. They opposed the Old Testament due to its Jewish origins and advocated for the exclusion of converted Jews from their church. Pastor Martin Niemöller responded by founding the Confessing Church, a faction within Protestantism that opposed the Nazi regime. When the Confessing Church Synod protested the Nazi policy on religion in 1935, 700 of its pastors were arrested. Müller resigned, and Hitler appointed Hans Kerl as Minister for Church Affairs to further control Protestantism. In 1936, a confessing church envoy protested against religious persecutions and human rights abuses to Hitler, resulting in the arrest of hundreds more pastors. Despite the church's resistance, by early 1937, Hitler abandoned his goal of unifying the Protestant churches. Niemöller was arrested in July 1937 and spent most of the next seven years in Sachsenhausen concentration camp and Dachau. Theological universities were closed, and pastors and theologians from other Protestant denominations were also arrested. The persecution of the Catholic Church in Germany unfolded in the aftermath of the Nazi takeover. Hitler swiftly moved to eliminate political Catholicism, arresting members of the Catholic-aligned Bavarian People's Party and Catholic Center Party. By July, all non-Nazi political parties, including these Catholic parties, had ceased to exist, the Rhine Concordat Treaty with the Vatican was signed in 1933, despite ongoing harassment of the Church in Germany. The treaty obligated the regime to respect the independence of Catholic institutions and prohibited clergy from engaging in politics. However, Hitler routinely ignored the Concordat, shutting down all Catholic institutions not strictly focused on religious activities. Clergy, nuns, and lay leaders became targets, resulting in thousands of arrests on charges often concocted such as currency smuggling or immorality. The Night of the Long Knives assassinations in 1934 targeted several Catholic leaders. Catholic youth groups resisted dissolution, prompting Hitler youth leader Balder von Skyrich to incite attacks on Catholic boys. Propaganda campaigns labeled the church as corrupt, public meetings faced restrictions, and Catholic publications were subject to censorship, Religious instruction in Catholic schools was reduced, and crucifixes were removed from state buildings. In response to the regime's hostility, Pope Pius XI issued the With Burning Concern, encyclical on Passion Sunday 1937, denouncing the systematic aggression against the Church. Goebbels intensified the crackdown and propaganda against Catholics. Enrollments in denominational schools declined sharply, and by 1939, all such schools were either disbanded or converted into public facilities. Later protests included a pastoral letter in 1942 by the German bishops on the struggle against Christianity and the Church. Approximately 30% of Catholic priests faced discipline by police during the Nazi era. A vast security network spied on clergy, resulting in frequent denunciations, arrests, and imprisonment in concentration camps, including the dedicated clergy barracks at Dachau. In the areas of Poland annexed in 1939, the Nazis executed a brutal suppression and systematic dismantling of the Catholic Church. Alfred Rosenberg, head of the Nazi Party Office of Foreign Affairs and Hitler's appointed cultural and educational leader, considered Catholicism a chief enemy. He planned the extermination of the foreign Christian faiths imported into Germany intending to replace the Bible and Christian symbols with copies of Mein Kampf and the swastika in churches, cathedrals, and chapels. Chief of the Nazi Party Chancellery Martin Bormann publicly declared in 1941, National Socialism and Christianity are irreconcilable. 
other Christian sects were also targeted in the Nazis' anti-religious agenda. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal and Patreon in the description box below.